Hey y'all, it's Courtney here, and today we're going to talk about the science behind and the math behind weight loss. So when I was first starting out, I kind of looked up some stuff and I, and I read things like a pound of fat is 3,500 calories or 3,500 calories. So in my mind, if I ate, you know, 600 calories a day and then sat on the elliptical and burned 800 calories, then I was at negative 200 calories for the day. That's not how this works. So if I had this information back then, I think I would have been smarter in my decisions and then maybe avoided a lot of long-term heartache and heartbreak. Um, I definitely don't recommend eating 600 calories a day, ever. So let's get started. The first word or little phrase I'm gonna tell you about is your total daily energy expenditure or TDEE. And that's really what we're trying to figure out when we're talking about weight loss. What your TDE is, is your RMR. Another word for that is BMR. And you take this, you add, you take this and you add your activity. And that's how you get your total daily energy expenditure. Now your BMR and RMR, I'm gonna kinda of use interchangeably. I prefer RMR because I think it makes a little bit more sense. RMR stands for resting metabolic rate. BMR is basal metabolic rate, whatever. So what this number is, is it's going to be how many calories your body needs to survive. So if you stayed in bed all weekend and you just watched Luke Cage on Netflix and you just marathoned it, you didn't eat, you didn't sleep, you didn't drink, you just laid there for 24 hours straight, that's what your RMR is. And that's gonna be determined off of a few different equations. So quite a few people over the decades have created these equations and what they're trying to figure out is, what is your resting metabolic rate? The best way to do to figure it out is to submerge yourself in one of those water body pods that cost hundreds of dollars or they have these DEXA scans now which aren't quite as accurate but close enough. Honestly, these mathematical equations are going to get you close enough within 5 to 10 percent of what your actual metabolic rate is that I think it's kind of silly to spend all that money when you can spend no money and figure this out mathematically. So there are three equations that are most commonly used. These days, what I feel like a lot of people do and what I personally do is they take those, the average of those three equations. So what do those equations take into consideration? They take into consideration your weight, your height, your gender, your age, and your body fat percentage. What all this is doing is basically they're determining what percentage of your body is muscle and what percentage of your body is fat. So for my example, I uh, popped my own stuff into this calculator. So at five foot four, I am 64 inches tall. I'm 27, I'm female. And I'd say I'm about 20% fat right now, maybe higher, maybe lower, I don't know. So that leaves me with 116 pounds of lean mass. And my resting metabolic rate is 1,000, 509 calories. Now, is this 100% accurate? No, because there are some things that can't be taken into consideration, um, especially from for us women. We have things like hypothyroidism, um, what part of our menstrual cycle we're in, um, if we have any other comorbidities like endometriosis, um, how close we are to, to menopause. There's so many things that this is really just a ballpark. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how we can figure that out. So again, this is if we just sit here all day, if I don't move, I'm gonna be burning 1,509 calories. Now this activity is gonna depend on quite a few things. Um, and in the calculator that I'm gonna link below, it's going to show you how to do this math. But basically, depending on your level of activity depends on what you multiply this number by. So if you are a sedentary person, meaning you just sit around all day, um, a good example would be someone who works at a desk job, goes to the gym maybe once or twice a week, 
doesn't do much manual labor. I think that's pretty much the average person and I put myself into that category. I may be a little bit above this, this one level. And that's because my job entails a lot of sitting and typing. As a veterinarian, I'm typing up records pretty much 90% of my day. And while I am standing and talking to clients, it takes me forever to write records. And that's what I spend most of my day doing. And then I go to the gym about five times a week. Um, you know, some people will say, well, I go to the gym five times a week and I, I'm there for an hour. Well, that's only five hours of your week, if you put it that into that type of perspective. So as someone who is sedentary, I will multiply this number by 1.2, and that's going to give me what my TDEE is. That's going to be about 1,800 calories. So before when I was thinking that if I ate 600 calories and burned 800, I would be negative 200. It's not the case because I burned a lot more than 800 calories that day. So that's, that's one example. Let's do another example using that same calculator. I'm going to put one of my family members information into here. Um, she is a 23 year old female. She weighs about 200 pounds. Um, she has a very sedentary lifestyle and she's about 30 to 35 percent body fat. So for her, her RMR is 1,711 calories. Now a lot of you are going to say, well how the heck does that work? She has a lot more body fat than you do. Well there's some things to take into consideration. She's younger than me, even though she weighs more than me. Um, your body needs energy. So bigger people, taller people are going to need a bit more calories than shorter, more muscular people. Even though muscles burn more calories than fat, there's still more mass that needs to be, you know, that needs energy. So again, she's sedentary. She has a desk job. So her total daily energy is going to be about 2,050 calories. Now, what is this? How do we figure out weight loss? Ideally, we should be losing about one or so pounds a week. So if one pound equals about 3,500 calories, that means we need to lose or burn 500 calories a day. For some people, this puts you at a place that you really don't want to be at. Like for me, if my daily energy expenditure puts me at 1700 calories a day and then I'm supposed to be burning 500 that puts me at 1200 calories a day. I can't exist on something that small. So take this with a grain of salt because I eat more than that a day and I still lose weight. So that's not taking into consideration a lot of those smaller details. And that's why this is just an outline to get you started. And then as you start losing or gaining weight, you know, do I need to eat more or do I need to eat less? Do I need to exercise more or do I need to exercise less? So in her case, if we took this, you know, 2000 and subtracted 500, we'd be at about 1500 calories a day. And that should theoretically make her lose about a pound a week. Now, when people start dieting, they tend to make different decisions. So if you're the type of person who you're not in a diet, you've never really dieted, you're out of weight you don't like, and you're trying to lose that weight, your first few weeks of getting into this diet atmosphere, you're going to do things like eat less cookies and chips and maybe pick more salads or, or pick more chicken um, as your, your intake sources. And that's going to change your weight as well because the more carbs you eat, the more water you're going to have. Now carbs are really, really necessary for an athlete. I personally eat a lot of carbs. I'm very pro high carb diets. Um, I'm not a big fan of the keto diets unless you have something like like um, epilepsy where ketogenic diets are actually proven to be super helpful. I'm just not really a fan of someone who's an athlete of a low carb diet. So as you're switching your carb sources, you're going to find that you're going to lose water weight. So you may not lose pounds, but you may actually shrink in your measurements. You may look thinner. So that's really where, you know, that's going to get kind of iffy for some people too, is when you're switching to this more dieting lifestyle, you're going to make different food changes and that's going to affect your body as well. So this is a rough outline. Now, 
what else can we do with this math? So let's take the old me into consideration, saying that this was my basal metabolic rate. So I was eating 600 calories a day, and let's just subtract that. So basically, by just eating 600 calories a day, I was burning 1,100 calories per day, which means that I should have lost a pound about every three days. That's not what happened. What ended up happening is I reached an area that I couldn't lose any more weight because I was extremely unhealthy. My metabolism slowed down. Um, and I, I hit a lot of health problems because of this, things like depression and anxiety. Um, my weight loss consumed me. So this was not a healthy place to be. Now, also talking about this particular scenario, I told you that I burned about 800 calories a day on different sorts of exercise equipment. I'm gonna caution people who use this to help determine this. And there's a few reasons. One is the machines are telling you that you're losing X amount of calories or you're burning X amount of calories. That's not accurate. So those machines are basically saying that the average person, so you put your weight, you put your age, you put your height, blah, 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 and then you start going. And they tell you, oh, this is how many calories you're burning. Well, they don't know if you're an Olympic athlete that's doing inclines as a warm-up, or if you're the average person who doesn't walk more than a mile every few days. Those two people are gonna burn a vast difference in their calories no matter if they're the same height, age, weight, gender, blah, 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 because what your level of fitness is is really gonna determine how hard you're working. Like for example, if I tried to run, I would burn a lot of calories because running is really, really hard for me. Um, it puts a lot of stress on my body. I'm in pain for days, but in any case, it's much harder for me to run than to say to squat. Now, if you took someone who's really good at running and tried to make them do some of the workouts I'm doing, they're gonna burn more calories than I do for the squats and less for the running because that's what they're good at. So those machines are guesstimating exactly what you're actually burning. It's not accurate. Even those, those heart rate monitors, I think they're good to make sure that you are working hard enough to get your heart rate up to something that is high enough, but they're not really good at determining how much calories you're actually burning. They're more of a general overview. So when we're doing this math and we're, we're multiplying by 1.2 or two or three or whatever our activity level is, that is including your workouts. You should not be subtracting anything else off of your equation, okay? So now we've done some examples. Say we figured out that, you know, in order to lose weight, you should be eating about 1500 calories a day. If you're a calorie counter versus a macro counter, that's gonna break down a little bit different from you, but what's next? Say we spend a week eating this particular way and we haven't lost any weight. Maybe we've overestimated how many calories we actually burn in a day. So, you know, say you put a two instead of a one for your activity level. But then you start thinking about it and you're like, I am really sedentary. I come home after the gym and I chill on the couch with my dogs. There's nothing wrong with that. It just means that you have to make some, some adjustments to your, you know, to your particular calculations. Rather than putting all of this crap back in the calculator, I usually say, let's subtract 10%. So if you were eating, you know, 1700 calories a day and this didn't make you lose any weight in two weeks. Let's subtract 10% from that. So 10%, easy math, you move the decimal place over one. So we'll take 170 or 1,711 calories, subtract 170 from that. So your new calories are 1,541. Try that for a week and see what happens. The other thing you can do is just increase your activity. Go for a walk with your dogs once or twice a week. Spend an extra few sets or reps at the gym and see if that helps. It's a balance between what you eat and what you burn. You can either eat less and burn about the same, or you can eat the same and burn more. You just have to find whichever balance works for you. I personally 
would love to keep eating the same amount of food I always do, so I'd rather do a little bit more cardio. Take my dogs for an extra mile every time we go for a walk. You know, maybe maybe at the end of my workout, I spend five to 10 minutes on the exercise bike. It's these little things that can change for you. Now, if you're not a gym goer, things like getting up every 30 minutes to walk a lap around your office, um, walking to wherever you go to lunch. And these are things that are gonna be different for each person. You may not live in an area where that's possible. You know, if you live in the suburbs, going for, you know, walking to go get your food is not really something that's gonna happen. If you don't live in a safe area, like me, I, ha I can't leave the building when I'm at work because I'm an emergency vet. If something comes in and I'm not there, well, what are you gonna do? So it's really gonna depend on you. I personally do laps around my work when I get bored. So little tiny things like that that can make changes to increase the amount of calories that you burn while still not having to mess too much with this equation. So I'm gonna put the link to the calculator in the box below. It's going to be off of my, off of my website. What you're gonna do is you're gonna need to have your age, your gender, your weight, your height. And when I talk about body fat, just guess. You know, you can, it, it's really hard to, to guess, I think, sometimes, but put in different things and, and see what makes the most sense to you. Um, if you if you have access to a gym, see if someone has one of those, you know, inaccurate things where you hold on to it and it tells you your body fat percentage, whatever, at least it gets you in a ballpark. I'm just guessing when I say 20%, I have no idea. Um, and sometimes that can be kind of tricky, but, you know, it, it really... Really, these things should be trial and error. You should spend a week or so doing uh, maybe what my calculator says is your maintenance calories and see if that makes you gain or lose weight and then start adding or subtracting 10% based off of that. You know, on the flip side, say that you ate at 1,700 calories a day for a week and you lost four pounds, that's too fast. Instead, why don't you add 10% or add 20%? Just really mess around and see what works best for you. So that's basically the math behind it. I hope none of you guys are eating 800 calories and burning 1,000 and thinking that you're in a 200 calorie deficit. I hope I've explained this to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the box below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.